All right, guys. So time for another movie review. I'm about to review Fast Seven. I'm just gonna call it that. And I, I like the first one. The second one was eh. Tokyo Drift. Was I enjoyed? You know, I just honestly that's kind of biased because I just love Asians and everything else. I was like, get that bullshit away from me. Now, time for Fast Seven, directed by James Wan, which is an interesting choice. He made the first Saw and Sidious, blah 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 blah. What did I think of this film? Um, there's gonna be spoilers, by the way. First, the negatives. WTF at the ridiculousness in this movie, okay? Even the cars parachuting out of a plane to, oh my god! The first time Jason Statham, Jason Statham and Vin Diesel, they, they like play a game of chicken and crash into each other with their two cars, and they come away unscathed, and then it happens again at the end of the film, and fucking, they have this, like, this, this, this battle with, like, these, they're wielding bars of metal and shit, and fucking, there's a part where, oh my god, there's, like, a semi-earthquake, and Jason Statham, um, is, like, in the middle of this big crack in the ground, and, and Vin Diesel says something whack, and steps on the ground, and, and the earth, the earth shatters underneath Jason Statham, and he doesn't die. When, um, Oh, God, when, when, God, what's that, Ronda Rousey, every line of dialogue in this film, you know, her, her, her dialogue was very limited, every time, especially when Ronda says something to the effect of, like, this party's boring me or something, she said something like that, something, she said a sentence with the word party in it, and when she said it, this was my literal reaction. Oh, oh, the opening to this movie with Jason Statham walking out of the hospital was just so cheesy. Like, it's just so... If you watched the original 2001 film and then you just watched this film right after it, it you would feel like someone just pulled a joke on you. Like, it's ridiculous. When, when The Rock and Jason Statham are fighting each other, it's like, really? Are you serious? The Rock would, like... Pull fatality on Jason Statham and pull his skeleton out of his flesh and just throw it somewhere because he can. Now, when the car goes between three buildings and the way that Vin Diesel survives, I'm just like, really? There's a part where Paul Walker is looking out, out the out, out the back of the bus and like all of a sudden Tony Jaw grabs him and like throws him back onto the uh back behind him onto the bus and why why didn't he just kick Paul Walker off and just kill him? H how they survived against that drone <laughs> uh, Okay. Oh, oh my god, the way that they destroyed the drone. Please! Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Hell no, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> How I, the Rock? There's no way the Rock <laughs> could have showed up in time to just no, no. Oh, same thing happened when Paul Walker, when he, uh, <clears throat> how he survives the bus falling off the cliff. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> how how could Michelle Rodriguez have have timed it so perfectly <laughs> to show up? <laughs> like with uh, Michelle Rodriguez amnesia or whatever. Yeah, we really didn't need that plot line. Uh, oh my god, just the ridiculousness and and some really cheesy parts and some really unnecessary emotional beats. Uh, th those were my biggest negatives. And I gotta admit, the first time that you see Paul Walker with the CGI face, which is uh, right before the house explodes at this part, where he's like uh, putting Jack in the car or whatever, that was rough. Like, maybe the audience didn't notice, but I noticed that his face was CGI immediately. I was like... There was a part like that towards the very end with him on the beach. But for the most part, it's... I mean... I mean, for me, I, maybe it's just because, like, you know, I work with editing videos all the time. I want to be a filmmaker. I think for the average person, it's probably going to be pretty seamless. But in all honesty, every single time he had the CGI uh, face, I could tell. But 
let, let me get to the positives before this video becomes like 30 minutes, all right? Uh, you know, the cast, you do feel for these characters. You do feel for these characters because we've been following the same damn character since 2001. Since 2001. Like, that's amazing to me that this franchise has lasted that long. There is a lot of action, and as retarded as the action is, it is really inventive. And there were many times where I was like, listen, that's not possible, but hey, you get an A for originality in cinema in my book, despite the fact that you just went far beyond logic. Uh, you know, that's the strongest positive. The, the sense of fun. Um and genuinely funny moments. And how they handled Paul Walker at the very end was very poignant, and it really struck a chord with me when I left. I mean, I didn't cry or anything, but, you know, it, it was a perfect ending. And I wish that they would just end the Fast and the Furious franchise right here with Seven. They're not going to, because Seven's gonna make more than like 100 million this weekend, so. Fast, we we all know Fast 8 is coming. They can all be all humble and be like, well, Fast 8 can happen. And like, no, motherfucker. There's going to be another Fast and the Furious, period. Okay, don't feed me that bullshit. But I wish that the franchise would, would end with Fast 7. Because the ending was so poignant and really... Oh, when they started showing that, that montage from past films with Paul Walker, I was like, wow. Like, this is really haunting, hauntingly sad to watch, you know? Paul Walker seemed like a great guy. It's a shame that he died. You know, he wasn't a great actor to me by any means. But, you know, like, like, like say the movie, I did enjoy the first Fast and the Furious film a lot. And uh, the film Joyride with Paul Walker is, like, one of my favorite thrillers. I'm serious. And Paul Walker seemed like a genuinely cool, f funny-ass dude. And, uh, you know, it's a shame that he, he died, you know. And it's a shame when someone's death kind of bleeds into such a well-beloved film or franchise. And it really disgusts me, some of, the, of some of the ways that people were commenting and making Paul Walker jokes immediately after he died. And just, it's like, yo, listen, he had millions of fans that loved him. And he was also part of a franchise that millions of fans loved, okay? It's not that weird that so many people cared about Paul Walker's death as opposed to, you know, some random person. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I thought the ending was really... The ending was perfect, really. Hmm. It's, it, it's not for me. Okay, this movie is not for me, but... It's, it's not terrible, all right? I've seen, unfortunately, I've seen way worse. Uh, this movie is actually quite a lot of fun, despite its, despite its um, <laughs> ridiculousness. I'm, I'm easily, easily feeling a 7 out of 10. So, that's what I'm feeling. That's my rating. I thought it was good, but nothing more. And nothing less. So what did you think of this film if you had a chance to see it? What do you think of the franchise? Do you think there's going to be another Fast and the Furious film with these characters? Let me know your thoughts down below. Bye. See you. Bye.